Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and this video is by request. I had asked by two of my viewers on the um, curved block some questions. This is the Impression Obsession Mega Mount. This retails for $25. Um, this is one of the Crafter's Companion rocker blocks. You can get sets of four uh, for about $25 or sets of two of the larger ones to, for $25. Um, and they're available at joanne.com so, and you can get them when they're on sale quite frequently for 40% off. Um, so they're, you know, these, these are less expensive. This is more expensive. Um, and then I've got your regular old uh, flat mount. So I'm gonna show you some techniques today and answer some questions that I've gotten along the way um, about these different stamp mounts. So, and the project that I'm actually doing here is I'm making some little earring cards for some of the beads I made the other day on YouTube um, because I sell them at craft fairs and um, might as well kill two birds with one stone. But but the uh, the technique I'm going to be doing here is just making a big layer, a big uh, sheet of pattern paper. So this is an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of pattern paper. And I, before I um, before I turn the camera on, I actually um, got my stamp positioner prepared. So what you do is you um, you put you a clear imaging sheet. I've already stamped on this one, um, and you push it up into the corner of your stamp positioner, the stamp imaging right there. You might have one um, stamp it up makes the exact same one but black, and then you ink up your stamp. I'm gonna use cream on this, but I did this earlier in red just so you could see it. So pretend I'm inking my stamp up, and then you line your stamp in the corner and if you're using one of these rocking blocks you just rock back towards yourself and that gets your image on the stamp sheet so this was question number one dinosaur asked me i believe it was her if not i'm sorry uh, for saying the wrong name but um, i think she asked me if you could use a stamp positioner with the uh, stamp of jig and yes it works with either the sta the um I'm sorry, can you use a stamp positioner with the rock block or the mega mount and yes you can with both so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start stamping this background and I've just inked this ink pad so hopefully it's nice and juicy and settled in there good. This is a creamy caramel, it's a discontinued color from Stampin' Up! So you know any tan would be fine for this if you want to copy the colors I'm using. And the first time I stamp it I'm not even going to worry about um, the stamp positioner. Then I'm going to ink it up again. I'm going to grab my little clear plastic piece, the imaging sheet, and I'm going to line it up. I'm going to set it down on my paper and make it line up with the um, with the image I just stamped. Okay, see it's not overlapping, it's just right up to it. And then I'm going to put the, um, going to gently put my hand where the ink isn't because the ink is still going to be wet because it's a plastic sheet. Um, and then I am going to replace the little arm of the Stampin' Jig just like that. Just try not to wiggle it or move it or anything. Remove this and keep your finger on that so you don't move it. And your stamp's already inked up so you don't have to worry about, um, just have to grab it the right way, you don't have to worry about stopping to re-ink it. And then line up your, um, your stamp in the corner and against the edge and rock it towards yourself when using the stamp positioner. And there it's perfectly lined up. That said, it's still pretty easy to uh, kind of wing it and uh, stamp it like that because I'm a big fan of the winging it, as you probably know if you've watched any of my videos. This is, um, you know, this is, this stamp is pretty well, the, uh, the you can see it kind of comes to the edge of where the background is. So, you know, it's not as perfect. See, that's me winging it. Not perfect. I'll bring it up closer. That's me winging it and I got a gap and that's using the stamp positioner and there's no gap. That's just where I didn't press hard enough. Um, and then I could even turn it this way and go down the other way. If I wanted to use my imaging sheet here, I could just set that there, put my stamp positioner down. This is terribly riveting, isn't it? Boy, it's gotten cold. I walked the dog this morning and the temperature said 30 degrees, but that must have been 30 degrees in the bright sunshine because it was so cold and the dog just wants to stop and sniff everything when it's so cold out. I think my, my, thermo my thermostat, thermostat, thermostat is wrong. All right, so now I'll just go down the, that and see, lined up perfectly. Maybe I shouldn't wing it so much. That, that does look nice, doesn't it? All right, we'll need to do this two or three more times. And get my imaging sheet, just remember to line up your sheet each time if you want to use a stamp positioner. And it does take a little bit longer, but it will save your supplies if you're the type of person that will not use it unless you stamped it perfectly. That said again, uh, this is going to be the bottom layer of our stamping. 
and so um, you're not really going to notice it that much. Uh, but I did want to show you how to do that with the curved block, and you do it the same way if you're using the Mega Mount. Boy, that does stamp pretty pretty darn perfectly, though. I might have to. I might be changing my tune here. Thank you very much, dinosaur. You've just created all kinds of extra work for me now, because <laughs> now I'm not going to settle for the uh, the subpar stamping job I'm usually <laughs> prone to doing. Oh, wonderful. Okay, one more time with the stamp positioner. And this is just so terribly riveting. It gets better, trust me. I promise. And the line up our thing there. And stamp this one more time. All right, so there we got our first layer down, and yeah, now I glaringly see the uh, the place I did it without the stamp positioner. <laughs> it doesn't look that nice, but that's all right. All right. Okay, so now we're going to use the Mega Mount, and I am going to completely wing it with the Mega Mount because I'm using a pattern that is um, a little bit more random. It's all swirlies, and I'm going to use my red ink. I like to do the most tightly packed design in like a, uh, a lighter color, and then if I have a more sparse design, I will use it with the... Uh, I will use it with a darker color. So uh, for this, I'm just gonna rock it across. And I can kind of eyeball it pretty well, decide whether I, yeah, I don't think I need a positioner for that. That, that lines up pretty well. And even if it doesn't, you're layering so you don't really notice. And we'll have one more layer that we're gonna add onto it anyway. And I might even be able to use whatever ink I've left on that to do there. And get some of those edges that didn't get it, didn't get inked too well there. And there. And then, I mean, I could even roll it over a couple more times if I want to. All right, so there we have a really nice overall double layer background. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into ATC size pieces. And I have one here already. And then I'm going to use a regular stamp mount and some green ink to add another layer. Let me just zoom in there. And I've got this holly background from Ink It Ink It It's actually more of like a border. And I'm just going to use this to give it another layer. And see, this is a smaller stamp, so using a flat mount is just fine. This stamp is probably well, two and a half, three inches wide at its widest point, and then it's about five inches long or so. And there, I have this really pretty triple layer background. So I also like to ink my edges so that my uh, earring cards almost look like a little bit of a frame. This makes it look finished and pretty. And then I take a little foam mat. I poke two holes in here, side by side. Put my earrings in. I'd write the price, price on the back. And then slide it into a clear bag. I just buy um, clear ATC envelopes. Ah, and, I, and I need to open up a new package of that, so I'll do that later. But I just slide in a bag, and there is my little earring card for the earrings that I made the other day. And uh, I hope that answered your questions about the uh, Mega Mount and the Rocket Blocks. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. Please thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.